السلام عليكم صباح الخير آه نحييكم في الجلسة الأولى من آه منتدى الإمارات الإعلامي آه معكم مشعل القرقاوي ومعي زملائي آه عاش تريم محمد العتيبة وفرانسيس ماثيو آه جلستنا اليوم تتحدث عن إعلامنا الناطق باللغة الإنجليزية وطريقة تعامله مع الأحداث الأخيرة خصوصا آه التجربة الـ الـ التي مرينا فيها في اليمن حاليا آه والحرب التي تقودها المملكة العربية السعودية لإعادة الشرعية آه لدولة آه الحكومة الشرعية في اليمن آه سنقوم بالتحدث باللغتين العربية والإنجليزية حسب قدرة المتحدثين واستخدام بعض المصطلحات حسب قدرة آه حسب توجه الجلسة آه شال وي؟ yes, sir. آه محمد مثل ما تحب بالعربيه او بالانجليزيه اذا ممكن تتحدث معنا تخبرنا عن كيف تعاملت جريده الناشنال مع حادث اشهد جنودنا البواسل الطريقه اللي تعاملتوا فيها بعض التحديات اللي واجهتوها مقارنه في اعلامنا العربي الوطني الاماراتي كون القراء مختلفين كون في طبعا علامة معينة للناشنال ولكم توجه معين فلو تحدثنا بطريقة سريعة فقط عن تجربتكم وكما نطلب من الأخت عاشا أيضا تخبرنا عن تجربتها أيضا في الجولف تودي كيف تعاملوا مع هذه المأساة أولا السلام عليكم إحنا بنتكلم اليوم باللغة الإنجليزية بس عشان نستاذ فرانسيس I think in the beginning like Uh, Mohammed said um, it was um, the situation in Yemen and uh, the uh, the amount of loss that we experienced uh, with the loss of the martyrs was a great shock for everybody. Uh, the media's immediate reaction was uh, the same reaction as as uh, that of the um, the entire country. It was shock. It was. Um, um, uh, a tragic loss, but at the same time, there was a responsibility uh, towards the reader to um, to enforce the, that this that that every war has casualties, and therefore, uh, a kind of soften, try to engage with the reader to make the understanding of this loss to be something to be proud of. Um, it, it, it's it, it's a sad casualty of of a great. A great uh, endeavor that this country is going through. Um, I think, uh, in order to understand how the reaction was, we should go uh, back in time to when uh, the English papers were established in the end of the 70s uh, and the beginning of the 80s, let's say. The way the English speaking media in the UAE uh, approached uh, the uh, non Arab speaking uh, reader as a separate entity from the country, from the UAE. And gradually, we see today that the uh, English-speaking media has become somewhat of a bridge between this, this reader and the, um, let's say, uh, the concerns of the country, the concerns of the, um, uh, the UAE citizen. We don't have a, a separation any longer. We don't view the reader that speaks in a uh, non-Arab uh, language as to be separate from this country. Uh, we try to, uh, let's say in, in, in the paper, we try to engage um, UAE national, uh, nationals as writers. We want the idea of, of the UAE national to be translated or, or understood by the Uh, non-Arab speaker, uh, non-Arab speaker uh, uh, who resides in the country. We have over 200 nationalities today residing in the UAE. We have to speak to each and one of them. Uh, Michelle, I think you're one of these writers that have found a platform to speak and to engage and to um, uh, share the local uh, ideas with uh, basically the UAE nationals' ideas with the non-UAE national that resides in the country. I think that's the most important thing of the evolution of the English-speaking uh, papers in the UAE. Thank you, Asha. Uh, maybe before we go to Francis, uh, just a show of hands. Uh, to what extent do you think, and, and out of 10, 
uh, 10 being total understanding of, of national security concerns of the UAE, do you think our, uh, our, our, uh, our, our residents in the UAE have a, an understanding of the perspective and the vantage point of the UAE, specifically since the Arab Spring and the recent upheavals and instability in the region? So just uh, out of 10, uh, Mohammed, very uh, quickly. Um, I'm not sure if we could sort of gauge or measure that, uh, but I think generally it's been very positive. No, no, positive but I mean, in terms to, to what extent do they, you think they accurately understand whether they sympathize or not? Absolutely. No, uh, in, in terms of eager, that eagerness to really engage and understand yeah. what is happening here and why that is happening. They want to. They do want to, absolutely. But they don't know as much as they'd like you. They don't. Like to and, and to be honest, I think this has been, it depends which generation you belong to. So even the Arab speakers that read the English press, yeah. depends on what generation you belong to. Um, there is that, what might be liking it's a historical context right. and, and background. But otherwise, there is that eagerness. And I think why, the, what sort of drove the eagerness and sort of key in interest mm. is what the UAE stands for. Got it. They see what the UAE is today. Mm -hmm. It's being far more vocal, far more assertive. And, and you can see that there's much more interest to understand more and more about the UAE. Thank you. So, if I could... Asha, do you think I could squeeze you for a number? Uh, <laughs> I avoided a number. It, uh, yeah, um, I, I would not go with numbers as well, but I think... Today, I think we have succeeded in, in, uh, in um, garnering a great loyalty for this country. I mean, this country, as I said before, is home to over 200 nationalities. And yeah. uh, what we have seen, the reactions we have seen uh, through the media are all positive. They feel secure, uh, you know, with regards to uh, this country being safe. And there's major concern for the safety of this country among the non-nationals of this country. Right. Francis, number? maybe a number, and then you can start telling us about how Gulf News dealt with all of this. We're, well, I'll answer your question. Um, I think from expatriates, understanding the security situation in the UAE... Can we get some more volume for Mr. Matthew, please? Four, four out of ten. Four out of ten. Not, not because of lack of willingness, but because of lack of awareness. And it's part of our task. Can we blame you for that? We, start, we need to improve it. So tell us about Gulf News. How did you deal with, with, uh, with the crisis? The, the day itself, as with all of us, was a shock. It was a, 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 a fundamental change. The scale of the tragedy was quite huge. Um, and it's hard to get that across easily. And so uh, we took, as, as all of us did, um, that th we just rushed to cover it, to get it. There were various themes we picked up on it as we covered it. Firstly, um, we needed to personalize the loss. So we spoke to families, we spoke to people, we spoke to, um, the, uh, to, to get the, to, to rather than say a number, you have to say people. And so that was a lot of what we did. Second, we found out across all seven emirates, it was important to us to emphasize that this was a UAE event, uh, that it's, it affected everybody across the whole country. And so that meant reporters and photographers covering the whole area. And it was also important to cover how the leadership and the people were together on this. And a, a quite remarkable event uh, in, in terms of how the grief and the condolences were shared uh, in a very unusual fashion. This doesn't happen in other countries. It doesn't happen in other societies. And so what we did there, I think, was very important. عاش قبل ما نطلع على الستيج تكلمنا عن ممكن دروس ممكن الجلف تودي أو حتى بقية الجرائد ممكن تعلمتها من التجربة اللي مرينا فيها لو لا قدر الله حصل حادث آخر أو حتى في استمرار تغذياتنا لتواجد الإمارات في اليمن في المستقبل شو هي الأمور اللي أنت كنت تتكلمين قلت لي حبيت تتحدثين عن الأمور اللي استقيتيها من تجربة هذه تحبين أنك تغيرين في التغطية في المستقبل أو إضافات يعني lessons learned يعني شو هي الأشياء اللي تحبين تضيفين عليها أنا أعتقد أن الأحداث اللي صارت في اليمن بينت ثغرة في الإعلام الإماراتي أعتقد من ناحية يمكن تكوين الإعلام العسكري 
اعتقد ان الاعلام المدني ما يسم ما ما لا يستطيع ان يكون متواجد في ساحات القتال وعشان توصل الصوره بعمق اعتقد ان الاعلامي العسكري او تكوين اعلام عسكري مهم جدا لدوله كانت يعني تخوض حرب او لا تخوض حرب وجوده مهم هذه الثغره اعتقد احنا لاحظناها طبعا بغض النظر عن التغطيه يعني العسكريه في دور كبير الامارات قائمه فيه ثقافي وانساني و يعني ادوار كثيره تقوم بها الامارات في اليمن المهم التركيز عليها بغض النظر عن التضحيات طبعا والامور العسكريه بس لازم تنعطى حقها الادوار الكبيره اللي تقوم فيها القوات الاماراتيه في اليمن لمساعده الشعب اليمني مهمة جدا ولازم تكون فيها تغطيات خاصة لها تنعطى حقها وهذا شيء يمكن ما شفناه في بداية الأحداث يعني بس يعني اليوم في تغطيات أعتقد أن الإعلام صار يعني تعمق أكثر في الـ في الـ في, الـ في القضية وصار يبرز هاي المواقف النبيلة للإمارات طبعا في جاليات الجاليات من الأجنبية من الجيل الجديد ما تعرف مواقف قوات الإمارات في في تاريخيا يعني يعني في السبعينات في لبنان الإمارات في الصومال خاضت في الثلاثة وتسعين هاي الأشياء يبالها يعني يبال للقارئ أن يثقف فيها مش يعني بس أنك أنت تعطي الأحداث اللي اللي جارية اليوم لازم يعرفون تاريخ القوات الإماراتية في 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 يعني نشر الأمن الأمن العربي بالخاصة والأمن حول العالم آه هاي أشياء لازم ما ما تمر مرور الكرام لازم يكون في آه تثقيف للقارئ عشان يعرف اليوم هو إذا وقف ويا الإمارات ليش يوقف ويا الإمارات؟ طيب عاش أنا بضغط عليك شوية صحيح. أنا متأكد إن كل اللي تكلمتي عنه موجود في أرشيف الخليج <تصفيق> كله موجود طبعا موجود شو تحتاجين أنت اليوم عندنا أبو أحمد موجود هو همزة الوصل بيننا وبين القوات القوات المسلحة شو الوش ليست؟ وات دو يو نيد؟ لا هو مش مش المطلب المطلب مش من القوات المسلحة المطلب من الإعلام نفسه أن يعني ينتبه لي لي لمواقف معينة يعني هو الواحد ينساق طبعا يعني يصير مثل يعني الخسارة الكبيرة اللي صارت the tragic loss we had with the martyrs uh, it was a huge shock يخلي الواحد يركز على هذا الموضوع طبعا إجباري بس يركز على هذا الموضوع ينسى uh, مواضيع أخرى لازم يكون في نوع من البالانس بين التغطية العسكرية والتغطية الاقتصادية الإنسانية الأحداث الثانية اللي تجري وراء يعني الموضوع عندكم الباتل جراوند إن شاء الله إن شاء الله محمد ها لا I want to ask you slightly I would like to hear challenges بس أيضا I want to ask you about لأن حنت عنا تجربة جديدة في موضوع التواجد في موضوع تواجد قوات الإمارات الخارج ويمكن هاي المرة الحرب هذه تكون معقدة أكثر من مهماتنا في كوسوفو أو في البوسنة أو في أفغانستان أو في الصومال مثلا فضلت اختعاشة هل في توجه مثلا في الناشنال على الأقل عندكم يعني هل عندكم انفتاح لفكرة أن يكون عندكم مثلا يقولون بالإنجليزي embedding media coverage with the army إذا إذا الجيش يعني وقوات المسلحة is open to this idea إذا عندهم تقبل الفكرة هذه هل هذا شيء فكرتوا فيه؟ uh, وايضا الليسنز ليرند بتكون جدا مهمه. عند الليسنز لا لا شك هذا الموضوع فكرنا فيه طبعا مع بدايه الازمه بس uh, and it's part of the challenge that we're طبعاً. facing. So if I could maybe um, break it up into three areas. Good. So one is the um, the source or sources for information that can come from uh, on the ground from the people uh, from officials from entities. And then you've got the, in a way, the middleman, the communication platform, which is the press. So paper, digital, that's the platform. And then at the other end, you've got the, the public who are reading and trying to, come, who are c coming to us. And we've got that responsibility to, to deliver the information and news to explain events to them. So there's that constant push and pull back and forth between us doing our job and wanting to do it the best way possible. So the challenges are, of course, if we start with the public, is are we delivering the news in the best way possible so they understand? The thing is with the newspaper is there's only so much space you can tell a story. So if you need to explain history in context, you might need someone to write a book with many, many pages. But we try to perhaps expand and write a feature, a whole page, 
to give some context and background about the activities of the Army with previous um, experiences. Uh, or currently now, again, why Yemen, what of the coalition, the importance of security of the Gulf and the peninsula at large. Um, at the other end, I'll skip the middle just for now, is are we getting the sources? Are we getting the, the information necessary that where we can then translate or help uh, sort of digest and then relay and push that forward to our readers. This is the wish list. Here is definitely, it does help. So there's a wish list here, absolutely. Is we need a spokesperson. Yes. Very, very important. Someone to speak, if possible, especially during a crisis, a spokesperson to speak at least on a daily basis. So. If not, officials from the relevant entities that are taking part in an event or in a crisis that, are, that are, will be willing to offer their time, and I'm sure they are busy, but offer their time to explain. Because it's not explaining it to us. We are just a conduit for the public. And the more of that information goes and trickles to the public, they better the feel. You know, they feel better about, all right, there is communication. There is no gap between authorities or officials or people that take part in, in, in these crises and the public. So it does give and bring some sort of comfort. Of course, in between, the challenge is up to us to deliver journalism in the best way possible. And we've seen, I know you've asked about numbers, but we've seen in terms of measuring analytics on our social media. And generally speaking, I think it's been very positive for the national the past year. Its circulation, online circulation has gone up. But particularly when there's a crisis, people come to us. And with more than 50% of our readership coming from abroad, international readers, they come to us to understand what is happening in the UAE or what is happening in the region through this lens. Ahmed, Anna, I'm going to use some insider information about, I have about you, uh, maybe to suggest Good an stuff. idea or ask, huh? Very positive. Very, oh, very, very positive. positive. Go ahead, please. Ahmed, you were a member of the film. You have a lot of experience in the film. Do you think that you can change the book? نحتاج مثلا يعني نشوف no. الناشونال مثلا ممكن no. تنتج شورت دوكيومنتريز خمس دقائق عشر دقائق كوت كونسمشن موبايل كونسمشن هل تعتقد يمكن هذا يكون كميديم افضل من ال no. ال ككتب او مقالات طويله او يعني لونج تيرم 4 5000 وورد اسيس اي مين اون اون ذس بوينت وين يو ار اتس اوفرينج اذر الترناتيفز اند اوبشنز تو اور ريدرز او كونسيومينج ديفرنت ميديا and I mean, generally, with what we offer right now is um, we, we, we realize how people behave to news is they see a picture. So they start with a picture. It just seems like people have no time to read. They see a picture. They like it. Ah, let's read the caption. Interesting. I'll click on it. Then I'll read the piece. So absolutely, the visuals are far more attractive than the words in this day through social media. Uh, um, uh, you know, on, on Twitter, on all these sort of short format, short messages, definitely what bolsters the news are the visuals and the images. So I would say absolutely. I think the direction is to, to create more pictures, stills, and as well more short videos or documentaries on the news. Francis, you wanted to talk about the importance of communicating to, the, uh, to, uh, to our English, uh, English reading uh, audience residents in the UAE about why we are in Yemen. Because it's, you know, communicating the uh, anecdotal, the detailed stories of the, the sad loss uh, of, a, of a parent, of a son, of an uncle, of a nephew, uh, uh, is extremely important and valuable. And it has a lot of, of uh, uh, I would say, um, yes. real depth. But also on the other side, this is for the, in the intuitive side, on the analytical side, I don't think my impression this is maybe the only point I'm going to share my opinion. I don't think the majority of expats understand why specifically we are Yemen. I think they have a general understanding why we are Yemen. Uh, do you think there is a role for the Gulf News, Gulf Today, the National, uh, uh, and other English language publications to communicate the story, whether through videos, whether through animations, whether through interviews, whether through long-form essays, tweets, no, it's, it's very important that we explain why the UAE is making this huge sacrifice. It's important that we explain that we're fighting for the stability of the region. We're resisting Iranian destabilization. 
that were fighting for the existence of nation states at a time of great chaos in where other states have failed. Now, that the fact that it's so close to our borders, it's, it's in Yemen, which is on the, on the peninsula, it's something which we need to ram home a lot. There's very, very good reasons why the UAE is there. And we need to explain that not just to the expatriates here, but the English language media is read across the world. And I, I'm depressed to find a headline in The Economist last week saying, the forgotten war. The forgotten war. Do you agree is, with that? I think it's a, a horror that the international media has forgotten the war in Yemen. I think we need to talk it up, and we need to say this is why the UAE is there and explain what the mission is. And I think we're doing it. We, we have uh, opinion writers who are specially commissioned to write this. We have opinion pieces uh, uh, weekly who are explaining what's going on, trying to explain the context for this sacrifice. What would you differently, knowing what you know now? This is the lessons learned question. How would you, how would you, what would you have liked to have done? What are things you, you, you're like, I think this would have had added value in, in, in communicating this? Over the past month. Because, like Mohammed is saying, I think we need access to regular briefings from the military. Um, it would help a lot to be accurate. Mathalan, uh, the UAE troops were going into Aden. We've got two, we've got two correspondents in Yemen. They were writing from the outside. Then, uh, but then they were in Ma'rib. And then now Taiz. The stories from Taiz are confused. You know, someone's uh, this way, uh, the Hussein are this way, and then suddenly the UAE is this way, and then it's this way. It's not clear. So uh, because the military situation is not clear, our stories are changing day by day. Clarity would be a very good thing. Mm. Embedding. I didn't answer that question. Can I? Uh can I just make a point on this? Please. Uh, I think uh, there are major, major, uh, um, let's say, uh, hurdle is the the uh, onslaught of different uh, information coming from different channels. So. You have the social media. You have um, the uh, you know the the militant media. You have you have sources coming from everywhere. So, like uh, Mr. Francis was saying, when we have a um, you know, a, a source that's credible, that we can quote, you know, that, that, that is from the battleground, it's kind of, it clears up that image, that picture of like this, this confusion of news coming from, from, from every direction and like every day you're running to clarify that this did not happen and this happened. It's kind of like a, a running after the news day by day. So I think, like Mr. Francis said, if we have a spokesman that is there that will give us some time to, to speak to the media on, on a regular basis with regards to these, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very fast moving, yeah. it, it, they're fast moving events. And so, yeah, I think, I think... Um, and, and if I may, a spokesman with maps. <laughs> <laughs> Very helpful. Maps and uh, data? Is data, data important? Data, maps. <laughs> Can I... I didn't answer your question on embedding a, a journalist no, with, uh, on not. the front. Yes, uh, yes, I mean, that's definitely a wish, sort of, to collaborate and work closely. Um, but, of course, we need to work closely on it with the army, or the sort of soldiers on the ground to be close to see and sort of witness the events as they unfold. So. Uh, but on the point on having correspondents um, on, the, uh, on the grounds in, in, in Yemen, I think we are fortunate that once, and even before the, the, the crisis happened, we do have a correspondent working out of Aden, and at times we'd have two. There's uh, others that when they are free would contribute to the paper. And that did help us in either getting scoops or um, getting original stories, original content that we hope does perhaps um, shed light on how things are changing on the ground. So with the war, liberation of Aden, and then uh, following that, of course, all that development effort uh, with the Red Crescent Society and the UAE, of course, in uh, helping um, prepare and open schools, hospitals, and, and sort of getting back, uh, sort of uh, bringing, you know, um, where the Adenites would, would lead a, almost a normal life day to day. So absolutely, the more we have your people on the ground, I think absolutely you get the, the news that you are hoping to share with the public.
And I think it's very interesting because you're also kind of combining the message of liberation or restoration of legitimacy with development, right? We liberate Aden or we restore Aden legitimacy and we start immediately developing. This is not something where we're going to go all the way up to Saada and then begin development. Yeah. This is not like the Marshall Plan that has to happen after a complete war is decisively yeah. won. Yeah. This is something that's incremental and being done in a very dynamic way. Well, that's a great message and a great story. It seems, you know, that with, with the liberation, people are, um, feel hopeful. So people on the ground feel, ah, oh, now we are liberated. We want to be given an opportunity to dream, to build businesses, to build families, to go to school, to get proper health care. And the UAE has invested and done a lot of work. So the more even we, um, if we can uh, get even more information about these programs, which some, some is shared, but the more the better. And that does help in explaining, explaining it to the rest of the world, what is happening in Yemen. عندنا تقريبا 10 دقائق قبل ما تنتهي الجلسه اذا في مجال نفتح المجال اذا في مجال نفتح باب الاسئله للمتحدثين الاخت اللي في الخلف على اليمين بسم الله اذا في مايكروفون الاخت هني الامام نعم ميسون عزام مذيعه في قناه العربيه بداية أشكر المنظمين على الأجواء وضعونا بالحدث حاسة حالة بمهمة فالروح الوطنية وروح العمل المتكامل رغم غياب الجانب العسكري الحقيقي بالجلسة لازال موجود هلأ نقطة تأكيد للمتحدثين أنه المتحدث الإعلامي بدنا عسيري الإماراتي إذا ما صح التعبير كاعلاميين نحتاج اليه وايضا المواطن يحتاج ان يسمع ويعرف ويتعرف على اللي بيصير، هلا في نقطه رئيسيه دائما ما نتفاعل بالاعلام العربي مع الحدث ولا نهيئ له. قبل غزو العراق او بالاحرى قبل احتلال العراق عفوا اذا تفهمها. بس في سؤال معين بدي بس اعلق على نقطه هو تعليق سؤال يتم الحديث عنه جند الاعلام الامريكي لتهيئة الشعب من أجل الحرب إسرائيل تعتبر بأن دولة ديمقراطية إعلامها حر إلى آخره ولكن بحرب غزة جند الإعلام من أجل الحرب في تهيئة للناس هل كان الإعلام المحلي أو العربي بصورة عامة عنده استراتيجية معينة لتهيئة الشعوب العربية على أن هناك ستكون حرب حتى لا نتفاجأ ونقول أنه كانت شك الحادث اللي صارت الشباب راحوا عارفين حالهم رايحين بحرب وبالتالي يمكن ما يرجعوا، ليش نتفاجئ؟ لانه لم نهيأ. انا اعتقد كان بيكون مفيد جدا لو عندنا جواسيس مع الحوثيين لما قرروا يدخلون صنعاء كنا جهزنا الجيش وخبرنا الاعلام وكنا مستعدين لمواجهه هذا الشيء، انا اعتقد مهم جدا ان الواحد يعرف ان دخولنا الى اليمن هذه يعني نقطه مهمه تقال الان، دخولنا الى اليمن دخلنا بعد بعد فشل محاولات كثيره لاحتواء الازمه. والحوثيين باحتلالهم صنعاء وباخراج الشرعيه اجبروا التحالف بقياده المملكه العربيه السعوديه الى الدخول بهذه الطريقه وتحرير اليمن من الحوثيين ومن يدعمهم واعاده الشرعيه، فمهم جدا نكون واقعيين في توقعاتنا من الجيش ومن ومن اعلامنا بان هذه الحرب نحن اجبرت علينا ولم نختارها وايضا انها حرب لم نكن يعني متوقعينها، انا اعتقد حتى حلفاء الحوثيين من ايران وغيرهم صدموا بالخطوات اللي خذوها حزب الله 20 سنة لم يسقط الحكومة اللبنانية خلها خيال لكن لم يسقطها لكن الحوثيين بين يوم وليلة أسقطوا الحكومة اليمنية تماما وأجبروا التحالف السعودي ويمكن زمن يرجع بكرة وخلينا نشكر الحوثيين هم أجبرونا نحن ندخل بدون اعتماد كبير على الأمريكيين فأقدر سؤالك لكن أعتقد أنه كان صعب جدا أن نكون فيه استعداد هل في تعقيب؟ دي هاي جايزة مني كومنتس about the importance of uh, coordinating 
uh, the efforts with uh, um, a la, these are bad examples, I think, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the American invasion of Iraq and the yes. continuous uh, attempts uh, against I Gaza. But the, the, the lady brings up a, an important point uh, in that it, 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 it was a sudden reaction to a sudden event, and th there was no time to prepare. But after, there is time to gather a wider coalition. And so the work being done to bring in other Arab forces, like the Sudanese, like the Egyptian help, is something which is quite important. So the widening has to follow after a sudden crisis. It can't be done before. What did we didn't know? Yes. بس بس اعتقد ان كل يعني كل وجهه اعلاميه عندها توجه يعني مثلا انت توجهك يحتم عليك انك تاخذ تاخذ هال مثلا خلينا نقول هالدايركشن فمن غير ما يجند الاعلام من غير ما يعني رده الفعل كانت رده فعل يمكن يعني صح مثل ما يقول فرانسيس ات واز ا شوك بس بس المسار واحد لان الدايركشن ما يتغير الدايركشن الصحيفه معروف اي ثينك اف اي جست منشن ذات اي ثينك وذ ايتش كرايسيس برينجز وذ ات سورت اوف اتس اون تشالنجز سو اي ثينك كومباريزن مايت بي يوزفول بس اي ثينك وي نيد تو انديرستاند ذا ذا سورت اوف نيوانسز اوف ايتش كرايسيس اند سيتويشن But particularly for this one, it was a, it's a crisis. Nobody had expected that. Um, I think we were fortunate, the National, to have a correspondent already on the ground before. So I say, were we prepared? We weren't really prepared for the crisis, but we had somebody on the ground. Um, but, and it was all up to him as a journalist to get the necessary, necessary information. Um, so we did our best, and, and I think on the contrary, there's been a lot of... Um, Uh, we were left as media to do our best in, in the best way possible and whatever means that we have at hand. Um, so, um, again, just going back, each crisis has its own nuances and challenges. I think we can take a question if we have five minutes, right? Five minutes? Five minutes. The last question Well, thank you very much. This is Irfan Al Hassani. I am editor in chief at Dubai Economic Council. Well, when I watch on the TV the, the English version of the news from the local TV channels, by the way, it seems to me that the content is more transparent, direct to the point, more clear, more obvious, relative to the Arabic version of the same news from the same TV channel. So please correct me if I am mistaken. If you are fine with this perspective, so I wonder if the TV channels have different views about the, the profile of the audience. Thank you very much. I think it's a very interesting question, but these are newspaper people. I don't think they feel comfortable speaking about TV, unfortunately. I don't know. I don't know either. I'm, are you? Do you prefer? I'm, I'm still waiting the, the, the answer. That's why I am here, by the yeah, way. Uh, if I just comment, uh, uh, that's a TV audience, and we are paper and the press, and I would say online in a sense. So uh, the format is very different. Um, if you do read our papers, I'm not sure that would be helpful. Do you read the National, for example? All right, good. Thank you. <laughs> that's a thumb up. <laughs> It's very kind. Thank you. Nice plug. Um, <laughs> Um, no, I, I think, I think, I think what, what, what's happening is the audience is far more sophisticated today. And, and again, it's our responsibility to digest the information and present it in the, way, the best way possible. And, we, you know, with, with better resources, better sort of human capacity in the newsroom, we, we can, I hope, and, and still do, deliver good content, but the, in words, in text, on print. I think TV is a completely different nature, um, but thank you for the thumb up. <laughs> thank you. Sahab al Maali wa Saada, Sad al Hudur, Nashkurkum Jaziran al Hudurkum Nadi al Jalsa, Wala Askirkum wa Tafarikum, Arjum Sharakati fi Tarhibi Mutahadithi, Ilium, Hamad Lateba, Asha Teriam, or Francis Matthew. Shukran Jazilan.